Uh, as you can see, it's a beautiful day. The first day we've had in probably four or five days. I mean, it's just been cloudy, overcast, rainy, and we really need to be planting, but it's still too wet. So we're gonna have to give it another day, probably another day and a half before we plant. But what I'm gonna do today for you guys is I've had a lot of people asking me, when are you gonna do the videos on how to grow 300 bushel corn? Well, I think today I might start it because it's a full process and we're gonna to have to break it down into sections, uh, maybe three or four segments to where um, we can get it all in in time. But uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try to do the first one today and uh, to try to go over step by step how I do it and 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 guys please don't 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 try to do it exactly my way uh, if you don't like it do it Just try one or two things uh, everything's not gonna work the same for everybody but I'm just showing you how we do it on our farm but you know I've had several people call me message me ask me you know for help and whatnot and i'm just not into that stage yet i i am though i am helping a gentleman this year me and him become good friends over the winter time uh i bumped into him at a show and we, we've just we hit it off and, and and i can relate to him because i know how i was when i was starting out uh it was tough and you know i got like i said i got hung up on that 180 bushel mark for the longest and never could break that hump but you know he he ended up uh, asking me how i did it and you know it's no secret how i do it so uh, i'm kind of mentoring him this year and, I, and as a, a lot of you know y'all probably know his name his name's dylan joyce the joyce brothers but um yeah i've been over there a couple of times already uh you'll see in a couple of his episodes where he's working on his planter well i'm the one that picked his planter apart and found the stuff wrong with it but uh i went over there kind of show, showed him how we done it and uh i'm mentoring him this year he's taking 25 or 50 acres and he's gonna try it my way and i'm gonna use my my formulations and everything that I use, I'm going to carry it over there, and he's going to try it my way. He's already ripped the field like I want it to be ripped, and uh, that, that just made my heart fill with joy that he's taking what I've told him, and he's actually doing it. But yeah, we, we, we've become good friends, and we talk on a daily basis, and I'm excited to maybe... Maybe let him see that 300 on that yield monitor. But what I've got set up here is the drawing's a little crude, guys. But I've got it set up to show you guys a little small segment on where to begin. Every year when we get done, well actually while we're harvesting a crop, I usually have somebody on a gator. I, I do my own soil sampling. The reason I do my own soil sampling is I'm not going to base my whole fertility program on some guy that's an intern that a co-op is hired to ride a gator with an iPad and pull soil samples that doesn't know my farm. Now then, I say that and I have nothing against these people. The what I do have against it is the number one rule in this whole deal. You need to take out all of the variables you can. Every single one of them. All the hopes, all the guesses, 
all the maybes, you have to know for sure that it's correct. Uh, you have no second chances here. So we pull our own soil samples, we get our own data. Then we go into uh, what we call addressing that mode, I guess what you say, but we address our soil samples. If it needs fertilizer, we put fertilizer. If it needs lime, we lime it. And then we go in to the number two one. And I've got them all written down right here. Number two, compaction. We're gonna address compaction. And when I say address compaction, I mean rip. We, 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 got, we got two different style rippers. We got an inline ripper, and then we have a 2700 deer uh, disc ripper and normally I'll stick with the inline ripper just because it doesn't disturb the top layer of the soil profile because I don't want to mix all that soil profile if I can keep from it but you know that's another topic on another day but we will we'll rip everything in the fall now are we done ripping absolutely not what we do is we come back in here in the springtime and we re-rip the corn ground. And the reason we do that, the number one compactor of soil is rainfall. Rainfall will beat it down tight. And uh, you know, it's funny I said that because old Dylan Joyce, he, he called me up. He said, Eric, I, I, I couldn't believe it. You was right. He had ripped some ground in the fall and I had sent him back in there in the springtime to rip it again. <laughs> and it was tough. He, he called me, he said, man, it was so tough I couldn't hardly pull it. No, like, yeah, I told you. It, it beats it down just hard. And uh, after we get that done in the springtime, and, the, and what we do too is we rip it back in the same line, the exact same line. And the reason we do that is we bring our planter back in and we set our planter back down right on that rip section. And that lets that root column grow right down into that rip, rip bed right there. But the third thing is we put litter out. And I kind of got the, well, I, yeah. I kind of got the horse in front, or the cart in front of the horse. We put the litter out, then we do the ripping. That's what it is. I had it, I had it wrote, wrote down here, and I didn't even go with my list. Oh well. But anyhow, put your litter out. We use chicken litter. We don't use commercial fertilizer. I don't like the salt levels in the commercial fertilizer. Salt is detrimental to the soil. To me, it belongs on the dinner table. Uh, I use all litter which I'm blessed to have a bunch of chicken houses around me. So uh, we use 100% chicken litter on every acre. And it varies from tonnage to tonnage. You know, we don't get nothing crazy with it. Two tons as high as we'll get sometimes. Some, maybe three in some places we're trying to build some land up, but we don't get crazy with it. And, and then after you get your litter in, you wanna do the ripping and uh, get that done. And like I said, come back in the spring, rip it again. And I'm just saying, do the corn acres this way. It really makes a difference on this corn ground. Then once you get all that done, you want to prepare the perfect seed bed. Perfect seed bed in the springtime. And when I say perfect, I mean perfect. I mean flat as that concrete. Smooth as that concrete. Man, we are eat up with gnats today. I don't know why. But get that ground smooth as concrete. And uh, if you have a coil packer, I'd like to see you pull a coil packer back over it to tighten it up. And uh, that helps bust in them clods that helps you get that seed to soil contact on that planter. And then you should be on your way and should be set for early emergence, fast emergence, and that should have us to the planter 
print planner part of it. And I'll go ahead and go over one more thing and we'll break it up into the next section. Once you get your stand established and, and you've got it going your way, and you can see how I've got kind of got the um, stages of corn plant grew out right here. Let me try to find my marker. All right. When I get ready to side dress, and this is a hot topic around here. Everybody around here side dresses their corn super early. I'm talking the corn just, you know, six, seven, eight inches tall and they're already side dressing it. I don't. I wait until I'm going to absolutely break it over with my side dress rig before I side dress it. And the reason I do that is a corn plant is kind of like me and you. It sits down to dinner table, it opens its mouth, it eats dinner, and there's something that clicks in its brain and says, hey, I'm full, just like we do. We get up from a dinner table, we go on. Well, I try to wait as long as I can. I'm talking the corn will be, it'll be almost chest high before I run through it. And then I've got, a, I've got wide drops on a side dress bar. I don't have them on a high on a high boy. So I don't have that luxury of waiting as long as I can. But what we do is we try to hit this mark right just right in here somewhere. Because the nitrogen use of corn is kind of like this right here. It kind of inclines a little bit right here. And then all of a sudden it does this. Just like that. Right here is where you want your nitrogen at, right here. If you hit it right here, it it's going to uptake every bit of it right here. You're going to hit this area right here. And it's going to utilize all of that nitrogen. If you put it out right here, or right here, Nine times out of the ten, it's going to end up in the Mississippi River. It's going to either leach or wash away. Because y'all know how we get these spring rains and all this. But, but that's, kind of, that's kind of the start of it. And I know that's a little crude, but that's kind of the start of how we get to 300 bushel consistently. And uh, like I said, I'll, I'm going to bring y'all along throughout the year. We're going to show you in the field, in depth, how we do it. And uh, step by step. Uh, yeah, we're going to just bring y'all along. Basically spill the beans on what we do. But uh, we're fixing to get out back here. we got to put some seed in the planter. Uh, we got to put in furrow and two by two in the planter. We got to try to get, get everything loaded up on the trailer because we're going to try to get out of here maybe tomorrow and get this corn planter started. But yeah, y'all come along.